Hello everyone, welcome to BioCaryon. Today we are going to discuss a topic that is known as cell junctions. See, three types of cell, three types of cell junctions are there. One is occluding junctions, second one is anchoring junctions, and third one is communicating junctions. See, in vertebrates, tissues are all tissues. Um, tissue means when two cells are binded to each other, they form a tissue. And uh, we all are multicellular organisms. So multicellular organisms need to maintain their multicellularity by binding their cells together to each other. So in vertebrates, the tissues are attached to each other with the help of cell junctions. In vertebrates, and certain plants also have cell junctions. And uh, these th uh, in these three sections, we will be discussing all the different topics related to this. Now, what I said, there are three types of cell junctions. First one is occluding junctions. Second is anchoring junctions. And third one is communicating junctions. What is occluding junctions? Occluding, occlude means to restrict the movement. This type of junctions restrict movement between two cells. So whatever is there in this cell will remain over here, will never move to this cell. And whatever is there in this cell will never go to this, say, third cell. So whatever material is present in one cell will remain in that cell itself with the help of this junction that is known as occluding junction. Second is anchoring junction. Anchoring junction, what they do? They anchor the two cells to each other. Some binding is there, which is anchoring these two to each other. So this anchor point is mediated by this anchoring junctions. Third one is communicating junction. If material of this cell is going into this cell, if, suppose, this cell was containing say these dotted structures and this cell is having the stars. So if this dotted structure moves from this cell to this cell, from the first cell to the second cell, so the junction that is responsible for this kind of movement is known as communicating junctions. Now in detail we will discuss all three. First I will talk about occluding junctions. An occluding junction, I said, the connection between two cells is stopped up. Two cells are not connected to each other. Right? Now, two types of occluding junctions are there. First one is known as tight junctions. And second one is known as septate junctions. Now, septate junctions, these are ladder-like junctions. It's like a ladder. Uh, two cells are connected to each other. Right? So, if this is one cell, this is second cell, I am saying these are occluding junctions. They restrict the movement between two cells. So, they will have a ladder-like appearance between two cells. This is present in invertebrates. This type of junction is found in invertebrates. Right? The next type, second type, is the tight junctions. Tight junctions are found in vertebrates. Scientific name of these junctions is macula adherens. Right? Now, there are certain proteins which make up this type of junctions, we will discuss in detail. The tight junctions which are present in all vertebrates are very important. See, these junctions are made up by two proteins. One protein is known as occludin and second one is known as claudin. Right? Occludin is a uh, integral membrane protein. Integral membrane protein means a protein which is present in the plasma membrane and inside the plasma membrane. Right? We all know that suppose this is the plasma membrane of a cell that I am drawing. So plasma membrane will 
have two layers. It is a lipid, bilipid layer. So these integral proteins are present in between the membrane, inside the membrane. Three type of proteins are there, integral and peripheral proteins are there which are present on the outer sides. Suppose, uh, over here, here and to this side. And third one is a transmembrane protein which spans the membrane. This type of protein which spans the membrane. Then, so occludin is an integral membrane protein. Now, this is the integral membrane protein in red dots that I have drawn over here. What it does to a second cell, suppose a second cell is drawn adjacent to it in the similar way. So it binds to the peripheral proteins, binds to the peripheral proteins of the second cell. Right? How binding up? So if this protein, this blue one, is binded to this red protein, so how they will bind? They will join the membranes, will come very close to each other. So I have to draw them in this way. The membranes, they will come very close to each other. They are coming very close to each other. And the two proteins have bound together. So this type of binding is a very tight binding. That is why they are known as tight junctions. So these two proteins have bound very tightly to each other. And no movement of any thing, any ions, any uh, molecules is possible through these membranes. Right. Second one is Claudin. Claudin is a transmembrane protein. This is a transmembrane protein. Transmembrane protein means a protein which spans through the two membranes. Now what is the structure of this claudin? The claudin is, yes it is a transmembrane protein. It spans through the membrane two times. Four times. One, two, three, four. Four times it will span through the membrane. N terminal is present to the inside of the cell and C terminal is also present to the inside of the cell. On the outer side there are two loops. Right? Two loops are there which will bind to uh, peripheral proteins are present on both sides of the membrane. So bind to the peripheral proteins on the other side of the membrane. Right? And this through these peripheral proteins will further bind we further bind to, suppose these stars, further branch to, I will write A, they further bind to actin proteins, actin, which is present to the inner side of the cell. Similarly, this is first cell, this one is second cell. So I have shown you the connection between occludins of first cell with the second peripheral proteins of the second cell, right? Claudin of first cell with the peripheral protein of the second cell, right? Similarly, Claudin of this cell will also be bound to the peripheral protein of first cell. And uh, occludins of this cell will be bound to, bounded to this cell. So, there will be a very tight junction type kind of binding between them. One or two of examples of these peripheral proteins, a very important protein is ZO1, to which these claudins and occludins they bind. Here, so this type of junction is known as tight junction. I have talked about septic junction. Right now, what is the need of having such a tight junction within two cells? Right. <coughs> what happens? This type of junction helps in maintenance of barrier. This type of junction helps in maintenance of barrier within two cells. Barriers within two cells. Suppose this is one cell, this is second cell, so there is a barrier between the two cells. The two cells are uh, can be distinguished from each other. This is one cell and this one is second cell. It maintains the barrier between two cells. Barriers have two functions. One thing 
barrier is known as functional barrier functional barrier gives the function to the membrane right now uh, suppose um, i'll talk about suppose this is the food pipe this is suppose a tubular structure and this is the food pipe through which food enters and uh, suppose this is your entire gut and this is the anus through which it is coming out so this is the lumen part right if i throw this open so over here a layer of cells is present that is the epithelial cells and on the outer side also a layer of cells is there that is the epithelial cells right so in our body this inner layer this is known as the apical surface suppose if i draw it like this so in our part in our part of this this layer is known as apical surface and the outer part is known as the basal surface right now whatever food we eat uh it has digested it has finally converted into glucose um after breaking down by lots of enzymes so this food is absorbed by the epithelial cells of this apical surface this inner surface will absorb the inner side surface which is present over here will absorb the food particles right now over here like uh, suppose i say this is the lumen this is the lumen and here epithelial cells are present this is first cell second cell and third cell so every time it is not necessary the structure will be somewhat like this right now this is the lumen of the intestine and we know it has a brush border right so this is the apical surface and below surface outside surface that i have drawn is basal surface this surface on the sides is the lateral surface and both of them are combined to be known as baso lateral surface now this apical surface will absorb the food contents and this is the tight junctions present over here tight junctions uh, some part is open uh, of the for rest of the junctions the tight junctions in this area if i draw two cells could be like this so this is the tight junction in this area this is tight through this part any kind of ionic movement will not occur right so if through this part uh, through this part any kind of movement uh, any kind of ionic movement is not uh, possible then what will happen this portion will be destined for receptor mediated endocytosis always no this line word endocytosis always at this end endocytosis will occur right exocytosis will never occur from lumen always food is there lot of food is there and which has digested broken down into small particles this food will enter the epithelial cells from this side which is known as receptor mediated endocytosis in detail endocytosis will occur at this end right at the basal end the outer end which will be present later on after lots of cells are there many cell layers are there so at that end exocytosis will occur at the basal surface exocytosis will occur so this is a type of barrier function which is known as protective barrier this is a protective barrier it is protecting exocytosis to occur at this end it is protecting endocytosis to occur at this end it is looking into the fact that exocytosis always occurs at the basal end and endocytosis always occur at the apical end this is one function of barrier right second functional barrier no diffusion of molecules is possible between these two ends i said between these two ends no diffusion of molecule will take place if diffusion will not take place what will happen either active transport will occur or some specialized type of transport will occur so what will happen osmotic balance 
of two cells will be maintained because diffusion is not occurring between these two cells. So osmotic, whatever the osmolality of this cell, this cell, this cell will be maintained all the time. This kind of function of barrier is known as functional barrier. So tight junctions help to support the functional barrier function. They give the barrier function to the cells, to the epithelial cells. They give the functional barrier function. They give the protective barrier function to the cell. That is why we need barriers. That is why we need tight junctions within our cells. Now location. Where are tight junctions present inside cells? Tight junctions are present in epithelial cells. This is what we have discussed over here right now. See, tight junctions are present obviously in epithelial cells they are present and in which epithelial cells? Right? Two types of epithelia are there. One is tight epithelia and second one is leaky epithelia. Leaky means name is implying. Material can pass from one epithelium cell to another like in columnar epithelium and sometimes in cuboidal epithelium. Right? So in this leaky epithelia uh, the tight junctions are not there. Uh, tight junctions are there in, uh, yeah, uh -huh, that was right, tight epithelia. Tight epithelia are present in distal convoluted tubule of the kidney, of the nephron, in collecting duct. Here they are present, right? These are present in lung epithelium cells, right? In gut cells, the epithelium cells, there also these are present wherever tight epithelia function is required. In leaky, in skin they are present. Leaky epithelia is present in proximal convoluted tubule of kidney. Here tight junctions are not there and not required also. Right? So this is all about occluding junctions. Next I will talk about the second type of junctions which are the anchoring junctions. Provide anchor to the cells. Anchoring junctions provide anchor to the cells. Second one. Anchor to two different cells. They anchor two cells. That is why anchoring junctions. See, uh, now uh, the cell skeleton, it contains actin filaments mainly and it contains intermediate filaments also so anchoring junctions are of two types first type of junctions are those that bind to an actin that bind to actin and second one are those that bind to intermediate filaments inside the cell that bind to intermediate filaments inside the cell. Right. Now those that bind to actin are two types. I will say. Are two types. Uh, um, first. <coughs> those that bind to actin are uh, are two types one is cell cell one cell binds to cell uh, or to a second cell so cell cell junction it is known as cell cell junction example is adherence junctions i will talk in detail about it right now and second one is cell matrix junctions what is matrix Matrix is the extracellular matrix. Now cell, if this is one cell and this one is second cell, so there is a small fluid fill space between the two cells also. Cell needs to bind to this matrix also. So there need to be a cell matrix junction over here. So cell matrix junction that bind from actin to cell to the matrix, this kind of junction is known as focal adhesions right third one those